Okay, Vijay told us that you spared them the horror of uh, dubbing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah that guess. is there. We <laughs> <laughs> so I knew that you know when Vijay comes back to dubbing, he won't remember any of his dialogues and goof it up. But <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So yeah, that is a, that's an added advantage. So other filmmakers who are making films with him, beware. No, <laughs> I think no, no, sound. <laughs> no, no, he took that advantage with me. Probably right. he wouldn't do that with anybody else because of the entire vibe that we had as friends and right. working as friends. Right. So maybe that. Right. So another interesting uh, thing about the film is your music. It's very quirky, you know, yeah. and Vivek Sagar tape loop, right? Right, right. Yeah. So. These guys are very fresh, but they are a band, you know. So, how was it tough for you to convince your producers to get a band on board who's never composed for a proper feature right, film? Right, right. No, actually, apart from being a band, uh, they are uh, musicians. Right. That's what Vivek always told me. Like, right. We are musicians. We are not uh, music director or don't don't compartmentalize us into right. some kind of this thing. It was very easy to convince the producers because of their work. Their work speaks for them. So Vivek Sagar and uh, the entire team of Tape Loop, they're musicians. They're not. Uh, they they always told me don't compartmentalize us into uh, music direction or something yeah. of that sort. And that's what they stuck to us, and they believed in uh, the entire uh, concept of music just being music. And you know, they they play music because not because of any financial reasons or whatever. They love the entire thing, and their work kind of speaks for them. So every time I went to a producer and I had to tell them about Tape Loop, I just had to show their work. Okay. And they got convinced very easily. Okay. So, so but in one of the press meet recently, one of the or I think the audio launch, one of the producers said he was in initially had having those inhibitions to actually get tape loop on board. So okay. Yeah. So yeah. So probably he was uh, he didn't express it to me very kind of. Uh, in a very strong way. Right. He said, uh, choose ko amma, amali, kutta mm. yeah. So, nevro kutta ne gada, so we'll all take care of it. Yeah. But there was never a major conversation where we had to decide whether they were in or not. Because okay. the moment they heard their music, they were sold. Right. So, it wasn't an issue. Right. How were the sessions with them? It is insane. And, uh, mm -hmm. I uh, said this in a previous uh, interview also that uh, when I, every time I go to Tape Loop, Chikat Pali Loka, there's a very small, sweet little studio. So inside that studio, it's like a Zen kind of a cave where okay. there's one Buddhist monk <laughs> levitating in midair. That's the way. So he ha he's uh, very spaced out. He's got his own space to work in. And uh, the thing is, he doesn't take any references. Like yeah. uh, I can't tell him that you know, he's in Mali song with you. Atlan ne jaye the He will stab you, or he'll ask you to just get out. <laughs> so the major thing is, he has to take interest in the story, and he has to kind of. Uh, uh, he's very technical when it comes to things. He's uh, technical or emotionally intelligent, you can say, okay. probably, about uh, the kind of work that he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, this process is that he has to understand what kind of emotion are we accentuating, okay. uh, are we developing character, are we contributing to growth and story, mm -hmm. uh, what exactly is the music going to do. Mm -hmm. And then this time he kind of saw the visuals and then kind of composed music to it. So the instrumentation that you see, uh, mm -hmm. Also, was based on a decision that it's a story stuck between uh, a modern uh, generation and a traditional environment. So even the instrumentation kind of has that fusion. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. has a, a blues kind of a genre, but it also has a kind of traditional uh, mm -hmm. instruments to kind of back mm -hmm. it up. So all these decisions were very conscious. Mm -hmm. uh, they were kept in mind to actually accentuate something in the story mm -hmm. and to add a entire feel around the entire film. Right. So, so what's your favorite song from the... My favorite song is... Uh, every bloody week it changes. But <laughs> I think it is Chinukutake and it's a song. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, from the inception of the idea, I was there with that song. Right. I was sitting uh, through the lyric session right. also. It was a beautiful, beautiful journey. Song. I like that song. Uh, the vocals dominate there, you know. The, like the subtle... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's... Uh, yeah, melody. Melody, melody yeah. So that's what uh, Vivek can kind of elaborate better on that. Right. But uh, he wanted it to be that way. He just wanted the melody to come out. Right. He said, let's be minimal on this. And it worked. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of decisions, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. instead of having a format. Right. So he didn't run away to the Himalayas 
because of the pressure i heard like he always disappears <laughs> no he is waiting to but because he's rooted in promotions now right. he's extremely camera shy he doesn't like promotions right. he's like are mallon ko cinema chesinatte undi bhai idi promotion nen elpotha bhai nak cheppu nen elpotha himalaya country so finally what's your gut feeling now that the film is about to release my gut feeling is uh, that once people watch this film i i'm not sure about uh, the openings because it doesn't have a big star and everything to be very honest uh, but i know that we've done enough promotions that people know that there is good content in it uh, if people realize that they will come to theaters uh, hopefully in uh, a decent number right. and that bunch of people is what my confidence is that they will go and spread something good about the film right. 